coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. Remote ID NPRM totals over 13,000 comments and counting. Horizon Hobby Remote ID video creates controversy. And the 2020 FAA UAS Symposium is announced. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world, in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. Despite the FAA's decision to deny a deadline extension for comments on the remote ID NPRM, the model aircraft community, with support from the EAA and other entities, is making their voices be heard. With the March 2nd deadline just weeks away, interest and response to the remote ID NPRM has been huge, with the current tally showing the comment roster totaling over 13,000 and growing. The rule would require most UAS, whether they're drones or traditional model aircraft, to carry equipment that identifies the device and broadcasts its location. Additionally, many would require to be equipped with geofencing systems. The rule would require every modeler to uniquely register each aircraft they own. However, models come and go from a modeler's collection on a regular basis, which would require frequent changes to the registry. Another concern is the claim this rule is based on security and safety threats, which is simply not proven in relation to traditional modeling. While there is a risk posed by drones operated in proximity to aircraft by misinformed, careless, or malicious operators, the same cannot be said for model aircraft. Now it's time for today's Drone Minute, where we'll be taking a quick look at some interesting news making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. An Australian couple quarantined on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan due to the coronavirus used a drone to get wine delivered to their room. Jan and Dave Binskin have been using social media to chronicle their time in quarantine aboard the Diamond Princess when they reached out to the Naked Wine Club in order to get two bottles of Pinot Noir delivered to their door via drone to break up some of the monotony of being locked in their rooms. In a Facebook post, the couple said, Naked Wine Club, you're incredible. Just got the first drop, thank God, for drones. The Japanese Coast Guard did not know what the f*** was going on. Police in Arizona said two of their motorcycle officers were nearly hit by a drone flying low over the street last month. Tempe police posted a video on Twitter saying, although flying drones can be fun and exciting, they can also be hazardous to the community. The department also included a link to drone operating laws in which the state indicates that operating a drone is illegal if it interferes with a law enforcement, firefighter, or emergency services operation. The Secret Service and the FAA have set forth a TFR for the annual Daytona 500 motor race. No TAM number FDC 0 3337 was published on Monday to specifically address UAS operations at the Florida location and specify the limited allowable operators that may use the airspace at that time. For over an hour last Monday, Madrid's international airport was closed after Spain's navigation authority reported the possible presence of drones in the area. During this time, 26 flights had to be diverted to other airports. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. A Horizon Hobby video narrated by Horizon Hobby Marketing Director Steve Petrato has many in the drone community, especially the FPV flyers, up in arms. The video was published in order to address Horizon's concerns about the remote ID proposal. However, many FPV flyers felt Horizon was setting some of the community against others, with FPV flyers in particular getting the short end of the stick. By distinguishing the casual camera drone against the rest of the model aviation community. Petrado's narrative had so much backlash, some copies of the video were taken down, 
though some remained on Facebook and other copies were reposted by concerned flyers who wanted to investigate commentary on the Horizon position. Horizon's Petrado has reached out to a number of divisions of the model aviation community to clarify Horizon's position and to minimize the damage. In the meantime, the remote ID topic continues to be a hot item as thousands of model aviators have protested the FAA's misunderstanding of the model community. The 5th Annual FAA UAS Symposium will be held June 16th through the 18th at the Baltimore Convention Center in Maryland. This year's symposium will focus on four primary educational tracks, public safety, technology and innovation, international and policy. The annual FAA UAS Symposium brings together industry professionals and regulators to promote learning and growth within the UAS community. The symposium provides stakeholders with the opportunity to talk face-to-face -face with a cross-section of government and industry representatives about regulations, research, and initiatives to integrate UAS into the national airspace system. With remote ID at the forefront of the industry, as the FAA continues to support the safe integration of drones into the NAS. And that wraps up this week's drone report. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Head over to modelaircraft.org for more information on the exciting hobby drone world. I hope you had a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.